Hello everyone and welcome back to Cinema Savvy and welcome back to another film review from the London Film Festival 2023. And my name is Tate, hi, and welcome to the world premiere of The Book of Clarence. Um, this, uh, this was one that I was really looking forward to from this festival. So I'm really, really happy that I was able to catch it and I really want to dive into it. But first of all, thank you once again for everyone for following on with the festival coverage. Please go and follow us on our socials. I'll talk about those later. And please make sure you like and subscribe the video just to keep up uh, the momentum we've got on the channel right now um, based on the London Film Festival things um, because your support has been fantastic so far throughout the festival. Now, let's go straight into it. Um, so for those who don't know, The Book of Clarence um, is um, a film directed by James Samuel. Um, he directed The Highway Fall a few years ago, which was one of my favorites in the festival a few years ago. Um, and the plot synopsis is struggling to find a better life. Clarence is captivated by the power of the rising Messiah and soon risks everything to carve a path to a divine existence. This film stars Lakeith Stanfield, RJ Seiler, James McAvoy, Bender Cumbach, Omar Sy. The, the list goes on. Michael Ward is brilliant in it. Like there is so many good actors in this film. It is a very, very good acted film. Good words, Tane. However, I'm not completely convinced. And this is my just initial feedback and opinion because um, it, it was today. Um, the world premiere was today for it. And there are some things in this film that I like, some of the concepts I like for this film. So this film goes a bit tonal whiplashy. Um, you get some moments which are like full on parody and it's advertised as kind of like a black comedy. Um, about kind of, you know, someone who basically wants to be Jesus in the time of Jesus. He sees all the miracles happening, thinks I can make money off this. That's the basic plot and synopsis of this film. Um, but you get funny moments. You get him pretending to perform miracles. You get all this stuff. And you can see that in the trailer as well, um, if you want to watch that. But there are some moments which are so kind of just like tonally whiplashed, it, like moments of like, pure kind of divinity and pure kind of full-on drama like moments of absolute horror as well like uh, the way people are being treated and various different things like i think it struggles to find that balance between the softer moments the the moments that are meant to hit harder and the humor and this film is so far in each scale the humor when it hits is phenomenal and it only hit me two or three times during the film that much I got the odd chuckle every now and then, but the big kind of hitting moments where you're literally laughing off the end of your seat only happened once or twice. Um, the kind of abject horror moments of like, oh God, that's the situation they're in kind of moments, that happened a lot more often and the drama does really come through this film. But the problem is the drama comes through in a setting where, you know, just like James Samuel's last film where he took kind of a modern twist on the old Western um it was like a kind of neo-Western styled thing. This is like the neo passion of the Christ, basically, um, where it is kind of centered on, you know, those characters trying to do things in a similar time. It's, but the problem is it has moments which are like the passion of the Christ, like moments of like, wow, that's kind of hard hitting stuff. And then it's followed up by like Monty Python-esque kind of, you know, moments in other scenes and stuff like that it's so tonally diverse i don't know whether it ever finds any grounding and that's why it hasn't settled well with me like i said i like the heavy drama moments and sure you could go down that route but this is absolutely a parody it is meant to be a comedy and it just doesn't find the balance between those different things i didn't like it as much as the hardly fall which i really enjoyed because that was able to kind of carve out its own identity and it was very cool to watch that film that film was like oh yeah this is sick you know like black cowboys kind of like out in the desert you know taking over a town it had a really cool cast it had a really cool soundtrack it was like you know they'd taken inspiration from various other films and meshed it together and made it really cool, like a music video with as, as if it was a film. That doesn't quite work here. And in this film, you've got it set in 33 AD, but at the same time, you've got kind of modern soul and jazz music playing throughout. And you've, you've got kind of, you know, like montages, you've got characters smoking weed, and that's kind of, you know, one of the main parts of the actual thing, you know, like getting high sessions and stuff like that. And it's just like it doesn't fit tonally trying to keep those modern things in there with this subject matter, with this thing. 
you either go full parody and you really make it kind of like you know your you know like your airplanes your um your full just like carry on series full 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 parody full parody go just full parody life of brian kind of style monty python-esque or you've got to have small moments of humor blended in with the moments of drama and this didn't have that it was too it was trying too hard in both categories to be a serious film and also to not be taken seriously at all um which which kind of didn't it just didn't sit well with me the cinematography is really nice in it um some of the camera work and direction is really cool as well the story itself is fun to follow and stuff like that it does have a lot of things going for it the soundtrack's cool but it doesn't fit in with the setting very well unlike the harder they fall which it did absolutely fit in with the setting very well um the performances as well the keith stanfield does a fantastic job in the lead of clarence um you've got really fun cameo characters so i, I will say this now you know when you, when you get ben the Cumberbatch's character fully coming through that it's one of the biggest kind of you know biggest scenes in the film and that that got a massive laugh from everyone um james mcavoy kind of pops up um in the film but also i want to give credit to you know michael ward who does a really good job in the film um rj siler rj kyla i don't quite know how to pronounce his name but he does a really really good job in the film omar sai has a really good role i could just go and list through um Tanea taylor and diop you know um david Ayelowo. um it is it is a fantastically casted film. And also um, Tom Glencarney, who was in House of the Dragon this um, last year, this year, last year, this year. I can't remember when House of the Dragon was. Um, it has a very, very good cast. Very, very good cast. But it does have some things where it doesn't quite settle. And we're now two films into James Samuel's kind of film career. I do start to wonder if this is going to be kind of the theme going forwards. Is he going to continue to do various different riffs on different genres, on different topics and stuff like that? and have that kind of, you know, R&B influence coming through almost, that kind of influence that he's had with working with Jay-Z and working with music videos with him. Um, and is he going to put that stamp on every single film? It's cool to have your own kind of style, and it's cool to be able to imprint that onto a film, but does it quite mesh with the subject material? And that's where this film is going to fall down on. People are either going to love it because they love the kind of the humour taken on the subject matter, and, you know, you're meant to just kind of, you know, the hard parts to get through, you know, you're just like, yeah, whatever, you know, that's that's kind of to get us to the next comedic moment. You've got to have the hard parts to have the lighter moments hit harder. Um, or it's going to be people going, wow, this was an absolute mess in that sense. And it did not balance those two things well. I think what's harder is, and you may have seen this review before, you may see this review after. I saw this film the same day as The Holdovers, which was one of my favorite films at the festival and is a comedy that has harder hitting moments but balanced it very well. And this film didn't quite do that. So for me, it's it's really, really tough to kind of... I know you're not meant to compare films, especially on the day that you take place, but the fact that I went from this film straight into that film and I enjoyed the other film a lot more, it's, it's hard to kind of not bring that in as an influence, especially at a film festival. This is meant to be a world premiere. It's meant to be um, kind of part of the headline gala. Whereas a film that I've seen afterwards, you know, which is still a pres special presentation, did a better job than the headline gala itself, um, which is uh, it's not a cause for concern, but um, it's interesting. And I, I do want to see what James Samuel does next. I do want to see what all of these actors do next because they did a fantastic job in the film. But this one doesn't quite hit with me and it may not hit with a few people. You know, people may resonate with it. Who knows? Um, but anyway... Um, that was my review of the Book of Clarence. Um, it's it's an interesting um, historical drama. I will say as well, um, because guarantee, and this this happens with a lot of films. So think your life of Brian's had problems with it. You know, every single film depicting Jesus has had problems with it. There will be certain parts of the church which will not like this film because it's blasphemous and it takes on kind of you know um, different parts of faith and you know tries to retell the story, shall we say. And it's worth putting in a disclaimer. Yes, this this absolutely does those things. It absolutely goes um, kind of like, hey, this is the history, you know, but ah, this this is kind of how this is how it should be told, you know, kind of thing and stuff like that um, from James Samuel's perspective and stuff like that. And takes influence and also takes parody in some areas. Um, it's it's fascinating, that aspect. And that did get some of the best laughs from it. 
Um, but that's worth noting for those it may offend some people. That's just kind of, you know, religion in film does that anyway. But anyway, thank you ever so much for watching my review of um, The Book of Clarence. Please go and follow us on all of our social media links. Um, the link tree link is down in the description. That'll take you to our Facebook, our Twitter, our Letterbox, and our Instagram, where we've been keeping everyone updated with all the films we've been seeing during the festival period. Um, and then also go and pick up something from Redbubble, our store, um, where you will um, find various different things with our Cinema Savvy print on it, and you can help out the channel in that way. Well, thank you ever so much for watching um, this review of the world premiere. Um, it was the world premiere uh, today of the Book of Clarence. And thank you ever so much, and we'll see you on the next one.